Hey guys, so today I'm going to be making an Easter pavlova, and a pavlova is pretty much like a big meringue, or you can make little ones as well, where you also like bake them in the oven, but with the pavlova, it's like nice and crunchy on the outside, and nice and soft on the inside, and the first time I ever heard of a pavlova was actually in this Overwatch cookbook. I've had this for a while, and I made multiple recipes from this book. And yeah, it's a pavlova with dark fruit, but that's not what I'm making today because I don't really eat any of those fruits and I kind of wanted to have my own fruits on there. And I thought because tomorrow is Easter, right now it's the day before Easter, so I thought I can do more spring and bright colors rather than like dark berries. So yeah, I'm thinking of right now that I want to put strawberries and maybe mango on my pavlova. I know I'm going to put strawberries for sure. So yeah, and then I'm also going to put sprinkles on like my um, whipped topping. Right now I'm going to work on actually making my meringue and baking it. And then <laughs> in the morning is when I'll put my uh, toppings on top, like my cream and my fruits and sprinkles and whatever and yeah so I'm gonna get started on, on my meringue and I've made it like a bunch of times but in here I'm gonna add my egg whites first to my mixer I'm gonna add that I'm gonna add a pinch of salt I'm going to add one and one half teaspoon of and then I'm going to add a teaspoon of vanilla. I meant cream of tartar. <laughs> Maybe this is why I don't do measurements all the time. And then that is a teaspoon of vanilla. A clear vanilla, to be exact, because you don't want it to be dyed brown. And then I have my sugar here, but sugar is when it's already frothed. And then that's my oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. But yeah, so I'm going to whip this up until it's frothy white. Now that it's white, white and frothy, I'm going to start adding my sugar, which is very thinly fine sugar. But I actually just took regular sugar and I put it in the food processor to make it thin as I possibly could. Because, of course, when you're making a meringue, you don't want it to have, like, the granulated sugar when you, like, touch it. That's when you can tell when your meringue is, like, almost done. When you don't feel as much sugar. But, yeah. So, you don't want to add it all at once. You only want to add, like, a spoonful at once. And I'm just going to, like, put it in there like that in my thing as I go and then it'll start to whip up. This is what it looks like right now. As you can see, of course it's not stiff peaks yet, and I need to add in my cornstarch, so I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to fold that in. Oh, it's kind of stuck on there. I'm just going to use my finger. Okay, that's that's good. And now I'm going to fold this in. And I made sure to wipe off all the edges of my bowl for some extra sugar. And already feeling it, it doesn't feel like it has a lot of sugar, like when I rub it on my fingers. But, of course, I still need to whip it a bunch more in order to get my stiff peaks. 
put my bowl back on the mixer and now I'm going to start whipping it. So here is my meringue. You can see it's really, really stiff. It's not going anywhere. And this is exactly how we want it. And before I can put it on my parchment paper, I want to have a guide so I know what I want my circle to kind of look like and how big I want it to be. And this cake board is 8 inches. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a pen and I'm going to trace it. Okay, I just got a sharpie instead because... The pen wasn't drawing as well on the parchment paper, and I want to be able to see the line on the other side because putting it on the same side as the pen would not be good. There we go. Close that. Put this away. And there we go. Okay, that's about how big I want it to be. I'm going to flip it over, and there, you can still see the line on there. And now, I'm going to take my meringue, this, and I'm going to plop it right in the middle. It's actually a lot more meringue <laughs> than it feels like, or than I thought it would be. And the parchment paper is moving. What I did was I actually took some of the meringue and I put it on every corner. And so that way it'll stick because I got to try and form my pavlova into a big circle. This actually might be a little bit bigger. It depends, I guess, on how tall I make it. Yeah, I'm just kind of not like entirely smoothing out the edges because I'm gonna do like flicking it upwards like this. Well, not like that. I was at an angle. And then smooth up top a little bit. That, let me fix this edge. It looks a little weird. That's okay. It doesn't have to be a perfect pavlova or a perfect circle. Alright. And now I'm gonna take my edges and I'm gonna kind of like flick it upward. I can't really do it at an angle. Let me see. Maybe if I do it this way. Oh, I decided to scoop out a little bit in the middle because that's what you want to do anyway. And then I added it on the edge because I want to build up my edge here. This willow. <laughs> But yeah, I want to build up the edges, and I'm going to just scoop out a bit more, and make like a well. Well, actually, I'll just do it like this. I think that's good. It's okay if I have a teeny bit extra. And then using this, uh, I'm going to use this instead, the spatula. And I don't get like the best kind of peaks that some people do. Like, they'll get, like, perfect little, um, edges, like these, where it, like, it's like a triangle at the top. And I almost actually wanted to, like, pipe my pavlova, but, um, I'm kind of glad I didn't. Because, I mean, even just shaping it, it's kind of hard. Maybe I'll just put some of the extra back on the top. I kind of messed with it for a little bit longer, and... I think it looks a lot better, and it was actually just really easy to just kind of smooth it all out and try and make a little bit more peaks. But yeah, so I'm just going to put it in the oven right immediately for 300 degrees Fahrenheit, and then I'm going to change it to 250, and we want this to bake for about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. I've had the pavlova in the oven for an hour and 15 minutes now, and I'm going to leave it in the oven off. Let me turn it off. I'm going to leave it in there off with the door shut for an hour, and then when that hour's up, I'm going to crack open the door a little bit to let the air in, and then it'll be another hour. 
but I will see you guys tomorrow to finish decorating my pavlova. It's the next morning and now it's Easter and this is what my pavlova looks like after it's all, you know, dried out and inside soft. And so now I'm going to add my toppings, which first I have my cream here. I just dyed it like a little green. And then I have my fruits. I have a bunch of strawberries and I have some mango. And then over here I have some Easter sprinkles. There's like little bunny shapes. So yeah, first I'm going to add my cream in. I'm just going to use this to add a little bit at a time. So you can add any type of cream, like you can add Cool Whip or anything you make on your own. But this is one that we just use for cakes and we had some left over. So okay, this time I'm going to use a spatula because you just want to scoop your whipped cream on top and then I can like flatten it out a little bit. With my cream, I'll be able to cover some of these edges here, like that are kind of cracked. So yeah, hopefully this turns out okay, since of course I've never made a pavlova before. But since I've made meringue before, hopefully it'll, it should taste good. It should taste fine. Here, I miss some of that. And then over here, these cracks. And then I'll add some more on top. Just like a little mound. Go. Okay, that looks nice. Now I'm going to take my fruit and I'm kind of just going to put it on there. I'm not going to put it in any specific way, but I'm going to, oops, <laughs> the mango's all slippery. Just kind of spread it across there. Trying to get more fruit on, so I'm just adding a little bit more cream. It's okay, it kind of covers up. There we go. And then add this piece of mango here. I just put on more and more fruit. The pack doesn't look as nice, but yeah, I don't want it to kind of fall over. And I want to have some more room for um, the sprinkles to stick to the cream. Just gonna get a little bit. I don't want a lot of sprinkles. I think Willow ate one. <laughs> oh no. It's kind of hard to get it when it's at an angle. Let me move it more that way. Turn it since it's on this uh, cake board anyway. And I'll just add a little bit more over here. Let's see some over here. Okay. Uh, just to make it a little bit more colorful. So yeah, that is what my pavlova looks like. And now it's time to try and cut it. So it's not gonna look as nice anymore, but I wanna see what it looks like on the inside. Before I cut into the pavlova, I wanted to show you guys Willow's Easter basket or bucket. We even wrote her name on here with the cricket. And yeah, she has some gifts in here and a frisbee as well. And so yeah, I'm also gonna hide bunch of treats in the backyard in the Easter eggs. 
So now I'm gonna cut into it. Hopefully it turns out good. Oh, it's okay. It's kind of crumbly, but I don't think I can like get it like a slice of cake, but let's see. There we go. Oh, the inside's actually really nice. You can see it's like nice and soft. Kind of like marshmallowy, and the outside is, you know, nice crunchy. Meringue. Let's see, actually, I need to get a fork to try it with the fruit. Uh, I don't think there's a piece of mango. Willow unfortunately can't eat any, but she's gonna get a bunch of treats for Easter. And then this is what the bottom looks like. It's like nice and more brown. And yeah, it actually tastes really good with the fruit. Cause like, I always felt like with meringue, it's like, oh, so sugary. It's just like I'm eating a thing of sugar. Then you have like fruit with it and it has like the nice like soft fruit and then it has like the crunchy meringue. It actually tastes really good. So now I understand because I wasn't putting as much fruit on there, but now I see why you're supposed to put so much. It's because you want the nice ratio of like the meringue to fruit. So yeah, I have this strawberry left over and I might just keep it to eat with my meringue because I still have all this inside. But yeah. It's really nice, and I think I would make another pavlova. It would probably be with the same fruit, like the mango and strawberry, because I'm not sure what else I would like on there. I don't really eat like blueberries or blackberries or anything. But yeah, I think this is a nice dessert to make for Easter. And I know it's like late to make it for like an Easter party or anything, but it, that would be nice too, or even just to have for yourself and a few family members. If you guys enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Happy Easter!